Elon Musk was the keynote speaker at Satellite 2020. Not only this is one of the main events for the satellite industry, but this is also one of the few large trade shows that was not cancelled due to the coronavirus outbreak. According to the organizers of the event, about 12% of the exhibitors and roughly 10% of the attendees have cancelled their participation as a result of travel restrictions. Some companies have instead cancelled meetings but attended the event. The presence of Elon Musk, on the other hand, was never in doubt. After all, in a recent tweet, Musk didn't seem to be worried at all about the situation. Elon Musk sat with Jeffrey Hill, chair of Satellite 2020. Here are the highlights. Well, the thing that, the thing that concerns me most right now is that unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars. Not, I'll be lucky. Yeah. This is my biggest concern. Now, that, now that, that said, uh, the Dragon really is just a low-Earth orbit transport vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really just, it's capable of taking a few people at what is still a very high cost to Earth orbit. I mean, technically, we could send people around the moon on Dragon, but I'm not sure we'd want to. Um, it's too, too small. So it, it, it's good, good to get this done, um, but it's, I, I think we need to be very careful of getting stuck in the local maximum. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, the space shuttle was something that was really stuck in a local maximum for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we, we don't want to be that. I mean, fr frankly, wh why is why does Soyuz still fly? I mean, Karlov is probably turning in his grave right now. Mm. Right. It's interesting. It's it's been quite. It was designed in the fifties. Yeah. Right. Right. If you told them, if you told Karlov and the other guys that they'd still be we still be flying Soyuz in twenty twenty, they'd be like, that's crazy. <laughs> There's really just one thing that matters. That is a fully and rapidly reusable rocket uh, that. That's the one thing that matters. Um, and it needs to be reasonably big uh, for your payload to non-payload ratio will be kind of whacked, uh, you know, won't, won't be good. So just like you wouldn't want a super tanker growing, like you, when you, you know, container ships, you have a container ship with thousands of containers. You, you don't you know, have like a bunch of tiny ships with little outboards on them cruising across the Pacific. That would be silly. Um, so you have big ships when you want to go long distances with serious cargo. So we need a fairly big, but definitely rapidly and completely reusable rocket. This is the fundamental thing. Without that, we're going nowhere. I think Falcon 9 and Dragon have, the, 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 they're asymptoting the, their, their tech, their technology architecture is asymptoting, meaning like it, it, it really would not make sense to have a Block 6 Falcon 9, you know, from where we are right now. It just doesn't make sense. Um, that's why we have a big focus in terms of new technology development on Starship. Um, for Falcon and, and Falcon and Dragon are kind of like operational vehicles at this point. So they're, they're, they're good products, they're operational, um, but, but there's not really, but, but we need a whole new architecture, and that's what Starship is about. Mm -hmm. um, and Starship needs to be fully and completely reusable, and rapidly so. Um, I mean, it's, it's being designed for about, an, uh, you know, to, to be relaunch, relaunched an hour after landing. With, with zero nominal work. Like, if you could have scheduled maintenance, you, or you could have, like, something like a spork issue, just like a commercial aircraft, but you're expected, the, the only thing you expect to change on a regular basis is propellant. Uh, but, but I think we, we want to aim for a capability of th three flights a day for the ship. Wow. Most of which is taken up with getting the orbital 
you know, ground track to come over the, the launch site. Mm -hmm. So Starlink will effectively serve the, I don't know, three or four percent hardest to reach customers for telcos, or, or people who simply have no connectivity right now, um, or the connectivity is really bad. So I think it, it will be actually helpful um, and take a, a significant load off the traditional telcos. Um, well, it will be a, a truly good experience because it'll be very low latency. Mm -hmm. um, and we're targeting latency below 20 milliseconds. Uh, so somebody could, could, could play a, a fast response video game uh, at a competitive level. Right. Like that's the threshold for, uh, for latency. Um, so, uh, so then, and, and ban bandwidth, you know, bandwidth is a very complex question. Um, but let's just say somebody will be able to watch high def movies, mm -hmm. um, play, play video games, and do all the things they want to do without noticing speed. And then the, the, the challenge for anything that is uh, space-based is that the, the size of the cell is gigantic. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, like I said, it's great for, for uh, very low to maybe, maybe medium s uh, sort of sparsity situations, but it's not, uh, it's not good for high-density situations. So we'll, we'll have some small number of customers in LA, but we, we can't do a lot of customers in LA because the bandwidth per cell is, is simply not uh, high enough. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what does the equipment on the ground look like for this? What is it? Yeah, um, so the, the, the ground equipment just looks like, uh, well, I think it's, like I said, it looks like a little, Euro, looks like a UFO on a stick. Mm -hmm. um, so the, at least the version one of the user terminal will actually have actuators on it so that it can it, it can um, improve the pointing accuracy, so you don't have to. It's very important that you don't need a specialist uh, or something to install. Um, it, the, the goal is that this, the, the, the instructions in the box will. There's just two instructions, and they can be done in either order: uh, point at sky, plug in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do it either order. Sequence doesn't matter. I. I am confident that we will not cause any impact whatsoever in astronomical discoveries. So we, we are actually working with senior members of the, uh, the, 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 um, the science community and, and senior astronomers to minimize the potential for reflection mm -hmm. uh, of the satellites. So, um, you know, we, we, and we've, we're running a bunch of experiments to, for example, um, have a, a paint the um, phase array antenna black instead of white, um, and we're um, working on a, a sun shade because th there there are like certain angles where the sun gets you know just sort of just right, um, and there's not like a little sun shade. We're not talking about a lot here. Then you can get a reflection. Um, and so we were launching a sunshade, uh, changing the, the, the color of the satellites, um, and otherwise minimizing the, um, the potential for any, any impact. Mm -hmm. uh, e even like a, 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 aesthetically, this, this should, should not be an impact, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's far from obvious that, I, I mean, it's real important to just set the stage here for LEO communications constellations. Guess how many uh, Leo constellations uh, didn't go bankrupt? Mm -hmm. Zero. Right. Zero. Mm -hmm. um, Iridium is doing okay now, but the Iridium One went bankrupt. Worldcom went bankrupt. Um, Global Star bankrupt. Teledesic bankrupt. Am I leaving anyone out? There's a bunch of others that didn't get very far, they also went bankrupt. Anyway, they all went bankrupt. <laughs> so you're focusing on making it work first? Uh, not bankrupt. Right, and not going to. <laughs> that, that's, that's a big, that would be a big step. So it's pretty cool out there, actually. I like it. Can you tell us a little bit about the work that's uh, underway, what we can expect in the future for the Starship? Well, we're building a, a production line. Mm -hmm. Pro production line is the hard part. You know, making one of something, it's, it's 
well, to, at this point, you know, like frankly, designing a rocket is not that hard. Um, especially if it's an expandable rocket, it's not a, not really a hard problem. You can literally read books that'll tell you exactly how to do it. Um, the, the hard part is that now actually building that thing even once is hard. And then building a production line is a thousand percent harder, mm -hmm. uh, like at least a thousand percent harder, yeah. maybe more. Well, we, we were <coughs> going to make it out of advanced composites, and the advanced composites they cost like sixty dollars a pound or sixty dollars a kilogram, like a little more than that, maybe one hundred thirty dollars a pound. Um, and there were sixty to one hundred and twenty plies for the the tank. It was taking forever. We weren't making good progress. It cost crazy money, and I was like, okay. Switching to aluminum lithium is also a pain in the neck. We do that. That's what we use for the Falcon 9 tanks, because it's hard to weld because of the reactivity of the lithium. So, um, you know what's easy to weld? Steel. Steel is really easy to weld. Uh, and stainless steel doesn't even require paint. That sounds great, because the paint shop's a pain in the neck. Hmm. Um, and you want to try painting something that's got to go to drop to cryogenic temperatures and can bend a lot. It's like, forget it. I mean, that paint wants to come off like there's no tomorrow. Um, it does not like to stick. So then you could use special paint. And then the special paint also can't get, uh, like, when you're going vertically at, like, supersonic, you get the, uh, basically static electricity buildup called triboelectrification. Well, it always reminds me of the trouble of trebles. Um, but you can basically zap yourself. Um, if you have uh, paint that the wrong paint, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, this, no paint is great. Uh, yeah. So we need a big friggin' big ass paint shop or Starship. Yeah. One like, less problem to think. One about. less problem, mm -hmm. and paint doesn't weigh zero. Right. Um, you know, they, they used to paint the, the shuttle external tank white, but then like, they're like, uh, well, we're adding a lot of weight to this thing, and it's a big pain in the neck, so we'll <laughs> just have it stay orange. Yeah. <laughs> So just not painting is great. So then, you know, and we're not the first to use steel. Like, um, they used 301 in the early Atlas program. Uh, Charlie Bossert, uh, I, think, I think it was, I think it was his idea. Um, there were obviously other people involved, but Charlie Bossert, by the way, that guy is underappreciated. He kicks ass. Really great. You should read about his, his, his stuff. He's, he's just awesome. Um, so he used 301. Uh, so obviously it's not a new alloy. Um, I think we, we're, we're going to start switching to a different alloy pretty soon, um, and then just tweak the alloy constituents because we should be able to do better in 2020 than they were, that they did in like the 50s, you know. So I mean, come on. So I think we'll probably start switching away from 301 maybe the next month or two. Now, the funny thing is that, like, I actually knew that steel, especially 301 full hard steel, couldn't be that heavy because uh, the original Atlas had a very good mass fraction, mm -hmm. right? So it can't be that wrong, bad. Um, and um, if you look at the normal, normal sort of standard material sheet for 301, um, it will usually not tell you what th th that it work hardens dramatically and improves the strength dramatically with work hardening. Um, and also, at, at cryogenic temperatures, it, it improves strength dramatically. So hmm. then the, if you combine the work hardening with the, the, the cryo strength improvement, you get an effective uh, strength to weight that is about the same as, a, as an advanced composite. So sort of take it to management, management by rhyming. If the schedule is schedule is long, your design is wrong. Mm 